Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to use planar modeling to create a head of hair. Essentially, planar modeling is using a single flat plane instead of a cylinder or a cube to create a complex object. I found that this is my fa uh, favorite method of creating hair because hair itself is just like a really complex shape, can be very varied, and so your best bet is to just start with a single flat plane, kind of like level zero. So here I'm just trying to shape the plane to the head. I mirrored a flat plane to both sides of her head and I extruded upwards to create sort of an archway over her head. And then I am just extruding out and again until I create sort of a cupped plane around her head. At this point it even kind of looks like a short bob and you could probably just stop here if you want extremely low poly hair but I'm going to take it a bit further. I'd like her to have a little bit of hair that dangles in front of her ears, in addition to long hair that goes down the back. In order to do this, I created another edge loop so I could extrude down right in front of her ear. Make sure that you have a reference if you want to practice this. You don't have to, but it helps me quite a lot. Here I just created another edge loop so I could give her ear some space to be shown. I like to have the ears show through hair because it kind of gives more complexity to the low poly shape. A lot of complexity in low poly modeling is the amount of colored silhouettes you can get into an image. And here I'm just trying to give the hair that's dangling down a little bit of weight by making it thicker at the bottom. And have it. I'm trying to make sure it isn't cutting through any of her body. Yeah, that's, that's not something you want. <laughs> I try m I'm trying to keep the amount of edge loops I give her to a minimum because the more edge loops that you have, the less good low poly tends to look. Like you'd think that more polys makes better low poly, but that's not really true in my opinion. And so here I'm just kind of moving vertices around, trying to make sure that they stay close to her head without clipping through her and I'm trying to give a sense of weight to the way the hair falls. You can see that I've made the ends a little bit thicker than the top just so it has this kind of like buoyancy to it. It's small things like this that really give low poly a lot of life and kind of prevent it from looking stiff. And here I'm doing the same thing. I'm just trying to give her hair a little bit more length and have it appear like it's resting on her shoulders. Just trying to give, you know, give the hair a little personality here and there. I kind of fiddle a lot with the vertices. Uh, I wouldn't advise it because it <laughs> takes up a lot of my time, but it's, it's kind of fun. It's not too bad. And so here I'm just making sure that when time comes to thicken the hair, which will happen in a bit, that all of the vertices are sort of where they need to be, placed nicely, and just look like they're resting naturally, most importantly. And here I was going to give her some bangs, which you can totally use for your own models. Um, I just extruded a part, three edges specifically, out, and kind of shaped them to be like side bangs, but here, um, I just added a little bit of shadow under the chin so I could more easily see the silhouettes. So this part is pretty important. I'm going to be separating the hair from the current object by pressing P and then selecting Selection. And this will create an object on its own. And this is really important when you want to create modifications that don't affect your other model. And so in this way, I can choose a Solidify modifier to give the hair some thickness without adding extra verts to the other model. It can be a huge pain if you forget to do this step and I've had to do it over and over. Anyway, so um, you choose the thickness that you want. I generally go with about what appears to be a half inch. And then you just go into object mode and you apply modifier. Now you'll need to rejoin the two objects so you just need to control select both and press alt J. 
So at this point, you have your new and shiny solid piece of hair. It really does appear to be sitting on the head, and I think that that you don't need to merge it to any verts on the head for it to be convincing. You'll want to make sure that you delete the plane that appears between the merged pla uh, merged mirrored planes because it will it will get in your way, and it's just extra polys you don't need. And here I'm just going to be pushing and pulling until I arrive where I like it, and I'm I, I get obsessed with pushing and pulling because I don't know I think it's kind of fun. My, maybe some people don't like it as much as I do, but you probably want to have your hair basically figured out before you solidify it because creating a second set of polys can be a little bit annoying because you it the tendency to have clipping planes goes up a lot and here I'm just adding a second material to give the hair a little bit of depth a little bit of shadow I find that looks very good and here I'm just trying to give her ends a little bit of definition and I'm trying to give her hair a little bit of roundness as well so I'm just cutting out some planes and I'm pressing F between edges to create bases and I found that I like that little bit of definition and here I am I'm just gonna add a little bit more shadow to the edges along the inside because I find that that also gives more definition and I'm creating another edge loop to have it kind of wrap around the ear as opposed to just being a square And so here I'm just messing with the colors and I'm nearly done so thank you all for watching, and I hope that you use this to your advantage too, because I find it very fun. It's very simple, it's easy to grasp, and I think you guys will like it. Alright, I'll see you next time, guys. Bye!